So there are two, two main ways that muscle function can be influenced by fatigue. Uh, one is the amount of force that the muscle can produce, and the other is the timing of the muscle contraction. Um, so these two things produce both a change in the muscle strength and a change in the amount of power that a muscle can produce, because power is the product of force and time. So if both force and time change, then power will also change. For sports disciplines that uh, have brief durations and high intensity contractions, then impairments in the nervous system are less important. But for most sports disciplines that have longer activities and where the muscle contraction is not so strong, then there can be problems in the nervous system that can contribute to the fatigue that an athlete can experience. So it's more or less the longer the activity, the sports discipline, the more likely it is that the fatigue is due to problems that have developed in the nervous system. Um, as far as we know, the research suggests that glucose supplementation will not influence muscle strength, which is normally measured as in one very brief contraction. But if a contraction is sustained for a long time, then of course glucose supplementation will have a huge impact on the force that the muscle can produce. So again, this depends also on uh, how big the effort was. So if the sports discipline has a very strong effort then the recovery uh, after that exercise is very quick. But if the discipline takes a long time and effort is not so high, then the recovery can take um, much longer. And sometimes it can take days. So this depends a lot on what you mean by fatigue. Um, if you think of fatigue as a disabling symptom that influences physical performance, then there are two main sets of factors that influence fatigue. One is the fatigability of muscle, and the other is perceptions of fatigue. Um, as far as we know, there are no physical characteristics of a particular athlete that predispose that person to fatigability, which is half the story, but there are predisposing factors that influence perceptions of fatigue. So for example, if a person has some psychological conditions, like they have mood problems, then this can influence perceptions of fatigue and, and as a consequence, influence the fatigue itself. So the answer is yes, uh, some people are more susceptible mainly due to psychological factors. I think this question is, is asking about recovery from fatigue and uh, when we know that an athlete is ready to perform. So this is a very important question. Unfortunately, there's not much research. We do know about how long it takes to recover fatigue from different types of contractions but there are really no good ways to tell when is the best time for the athlete to return to competition. And this is important in different types of disciplines, especially when you have to, you have competitions at every other day, for example, how you need to know how long it takes for the athlete to be ready to perform. And there's no good measurement of that yet. Again, this question depends a lot on what you mean by fatigue. So if you think of fatigue as some big picture idea that it's a, it's a disabling symptom that includes muscle problems, nervous system problems, and perceptions of fatigue, uh, I, it seems to me that the best uh, guide is simply to ask the athlete. If the athlete is being honest, then uh, that athlete's perception of fatigue is a very good index of when that when it's when the person is ready to perform and, and whether the loads are too much or not